Hi, this is Mike Larson for Money and Markets TV. Believe it or not, housing has been one of the best performing sectors of the stock market over the past couple of months. The Philadelphia Housing Sector Index has soared 49% since October alone, and some individual stocks have performed even better. Leading home builder Pulte Group, for instance, more than doubled. Now, there are a couple of reasons for this positive short term trend. For one, many investors believe the recent string of decent U.S. economic data signals better times ahead. In addition, Wall Street seems to be optimistic about the upcoming spring home buying season and about Washington's latest plan to save the housing market. But unfortunately, just like the last couple of times the pundits declared a lasting bottom in the housing market, this one should prove fleeting. Now, granted, there has been a definite improvement in some housing data. Existing home sales rose to a 10 month high in November, while housing starts jumped to their best level in 19 months. Still, those readings are far below the robust numbers we saw in the single-family housing markets a few years ago. They're more like slight increases from the deeply depressed figures we've had since the market crashed. Plus, a big reason for the construction boost is that more families are choosing to rent instead of buy, and that's leading to an increase in apartment building. And one more sign that there's less here than meets the eye is that home pricing remains under significant pressure. CoreLogic's price index fell for a fourth straight month in November, and it's now down more than 4% from a year earlier. In fact, the chief economist at real estate firm Zillow.com believes we're still three to five years away from normal housing market conditions. Simply put, not much has changed. We're still seeing temporary upticks in sales and construction, but not the lasting, durable recovery that many on Wall Street are predicting. And that brings me to the housing stocks. Like I said, they've been rising at a much faster rate than the market and at a much faster rate than the underlying real estate market, due mainly to the latest rumors about a big housing fix from Washington. A few days ago, the Federal Reserve released a white paper discussing the possibility of easing lending standards and converting some of the for sale housing stock into rental properties. Meanwhile, recent reports say that Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac are planning to sell foreclosed inventory in bulk to investors who would then turn around and rent those homes out. The goal is to reduce the inventory of distressed for sale homes and relieve the pressure on home prices. What's funny is that housing stocks started rallying long before this news broke, so it's obvious to me that big investors got advance word of the plan. It's the same pattern we saw with all the other rescue plans for the housing market. Chatter picks up, proposals make the rounds, investors who are plugged in buy early. But every single time, the reality fails to live up to the hype, and the housing stocks ultimately fall again. Take the Obama administration's signature HAMP plan as just one example. It was expected and for forecasted to result in four to five million mortgage modifications, but it's actually resulted in just 750,000 so far. And there's no reason to expect any more success from the current plan. So if you happen to catch this rally, my advice is simple, sell into it. Otherwise, consider select investments that rise in value as housing stocks fall. I'm Mike Larson for Money and Markets TV. Thanks for watching.